All right, guys, we're going live. We are live. All right, welcome guys. Episode six, Stream Live Tampa. We want to start by saying thank you for joining us. Um, we, we, we definitely appreciate your support um, and your views. Please like us on Facebook, um, share us on Twitter. You can find us on Twitch, YouTube. Um, we do this for free and we do this for you know, for the kids to get some exposure. So we would definitely uh, appreciate, you know, sharing and liking and all that good stuff. Um, we got another great show today. We are sponsored by um, Lucas AC. All right. And if you're needing some, uh, you know, it's getting hot. It's already hot, right? If you need a free estimate, call Lewis. All right. 813 813-369-9389. He's got the best prices and the best service, right? Lucas AC Service. Also, another sponsor of our show, AB Sports Performance, uh, forging the path to peak performance. You can call them 813-760-4217 or check them out on Facebook or Instagram, AB Sports Performance. All right, so again, who we are, just a little bit about us. Um, we're just gonna like stream live. We've covered uh, games baseball, basketball, softball, volleyball, um, looking to get into football. So any and everything high school, um, especially around this, this Tampa Bay area, uh, we cover. And again, we do this for free. We do it for, you know, the fans of, of athletes and maybe family out in, in California trying to watch, you know, their, their granddaughter or grandson play. Um, so again, liking and sharing definitely helps out. I'd also like to thank our last couple of sponsors here. Um, you need an affordable glove, a custom glove at that. Lou Larandi, um, check him out, man. He's got some some really, really fire colors. Um, call him at 404-401-2794 or visit him at larandigloves.com. Okay, don't break the bank buying custom gloves. And then game time prospects. Uh, Want to play baseball at the next level? Well, you got to be recruited, and this is a good service for you. Call David Sansom, 813 813- 486-9716. All right, guys. So we are lucky today to be uh, joined by Coach Ellie Wilbur from Brooks to Bartolo. Um, she's coming in here from a, a, a first year um, under the helm. And it was a, it was a fiery year. It was a, a very good year, uh, an elite eight, if you will, um, finish. And looking to build. So... Let me, uh, let me give you the floor, Coach Wilbur. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your background in basketball. Uh, so this is my first year as head coach at Bristol Barlow. It's my fifth year coaching in Tampa. My first year was at Plant High School. And then um, the other, I had three years with Coach Maggie Brooks for assistant. And then I got the head job this past year. i from New Jersey, played basketball in New Jersey, um, played at UT for a little bit, and then um, – now I'm here. Now I'm coaching. Been pretty much in basketball my entire life, so I don't really know anything else. Probably the longest I've ever been not in a basketball place or touched a basketball. So it's uncharted waters for a lot of us, especially myself. I was just gonna say, how are you? Uh, how are you keeping sane with this, uh, you know, lockdown situation? Well, I bought a bike. That was like a big quarantine purchase. Of course. I bought a fancy, I bought a fancy little bike so I can, you know, turn around town a little bit. Um, I've killed a lot of Netflix shows, a lot of Hulu shows. Um, I take a lot of naps when I can, get work on my tan. Probably the tanist I've been in a hot minute. Can't remember the last time I actually had like tan lines. So maybe when I was living right. in Jersey. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep yourself busy. It's a it's been a long. I guess it's only been about a month and in, in, in a couple of weeks, you know. But it feels like forever. Um, you know, so you got got to keep your mind busy. Um, let's start out uh, just kind of going through your roster and and one big player I want to hit. She's you know the only senior that we're we're graduating. And we are, I'm also a teacher at Brooks. Um, so I'll try to keep it as neutral as possible. But um, she is a, a wonderful, I'll say my little piece real quick, but she's a wonderful you know, student athlete. Um, and, and you know that just as anyone else. But um, just like to get you, you know, give us maybe a, a minute conversation on on who is Julian Trice, Juju, and, and what does she bring to the team? Uh, so Julian, also known as Juju in our world, um, transferred in her junior year after being at Wharton and gladly brought, brought some height to our team, which we needed. Also brought a lot of laughs to our team. Um, she's probably one of the smartest kids I've probably ever been around, probably will ever be around. Um, she comes from a really good family. Um, she's a really good kid. She's like the kid at school everybody knows. Um, she probably, when we had games, I think she had the most fans there. She never believed me, but uh, she's like the little mayor of Tampa at times in Brooks of Barlow. Um, everybody loves her, the kids, teachers, staff. Um, she's a big fan favorite. Uh, we will miss her next year, but she, I'm sure, is going to go on and do much bigger and better things. Um, the sky's the one with that kid, though. She's, like I said, as smart as smart gets. And uh, whatever she wants to do, I'm fairly confident she will make sure it gets done. I definitely agree with that. Awesome, awesome. All right, so now maybe a couple sentences so we can get, you know, talking about the, the season and upcoming season two and all that in between. Um, number one, Maya Lures. Oh, what a kid. Like, I have that kid is so this is obviously my first year as head coach, but what a great one of the best freshmen you could possibly have. You know, she came in right away, ready to go. You know, luckily for us, she's you know, she's a lot of the girls know each other, which is a real blessing for me, obviously. But she does everything she's asked, she gets good grades, she comes from a great family, she works hard. She's probably one of the better defenders that people don't realize, but I put her on a lot of people. This year, that a 14-year-old, 15-year-old kid, you wouldn't think could guard, but she can. Definitely rises to the challenge. Bree Jones. Oh, Bree Jones. What a gem of a human. Um, she's great. Um, she doesn't say much, but when she does, everyone, you kind of listen. Um, she's probably, probably the most artistic kid I've never, ever met. A kid can draw, like, no tomorrow. I have a couple of her things hanging in my room because I've asked her to make me some. Um, but a great kid. Another one who comes from a great family, works really hard, never complains, shows up every day. Um, but yeah, another another great freshman. Definitely. Allison Elmore. Allie is our um, probably the quietest one on the team. Um, however, she probably is one of the best listeners on the team and asks probably the best questions. Um, she also, when she talks to you, looks you right in the eye. Like if I'm talking at practice, She's looking me straight in the eye. She's not looking at anything else. She's not looking at the floor. Whether I'm talking to her or not, she's constantly engaged. Um, she's got a real chance, I think, in a couple of years to really make a difference. And she keeps awesome. working hard. Definitely, definitely. Amari Godwin. Oh, Amari. <laughs> uh, it's crazy that Amari's going to be a senior. Like, it doesn't feel real. Um, the senior class is kind of special to me because the senior class would be the first class I'll see from the freshman year to the senior year. So I've seen them since they were little 13, 14 year old kids, and now they're going to be 18 year old women. So um, Amari is as tough as nails. Um, she's a gamer. Like I no other word to describe her of all just be a gamer. If it's a Definitely. big game, she's Amari's going to show up. Whether it's scoring, defending, whatever it may be, she's going to show up. I think that's a great way to, to you know describe her. Brianna McClinton. Great. Brie probably gets her name yelled the most, and everyone, uh, a co-worker of ours, actually asks me what she does wrong all the time. And I'm like, it's not that she's doing stuff wrong. It's that she always has to end up being, like, the right place, and she's usually there. But her name just, like, flows so easily off, like, the tongue for whatever reason it may be. Um, but such a hard worker. Her improvement from her freshman year to where she is now is it's remarkable. I mean, it's just a testament to her, how much hard work she's put in. Um, she didn't play a lot as a freshman because we had kids, juniors and seniors that were very really good, but you know, she took her time and I think she started most of the games her sophomore year. She started every year game this year. And, I mean, she's great, great kid, great everything. Elena Sherman. 
Elena was another surprise. Um, Elena did not work out with us last summer. I don't know if she had not gotten into school yet or whatever it was. So she kind of showed up on the first day of school. And again, a pleasant surprise. She probably hit one of the biggest shots of the year this year against Duffner early. Like it was the second game, third game of the season. We had six players. Juju was sick, didn't play. We had three juniors, a sophomore and two freshmen playing in a high stakes environment. She came in and knocked out a three, which I think put us up one or two and we didn't look back. So again, another pleasant surprise, funny kid, a good kid, great kid in class. So a nice pleasant surprise. Ayana Simmons. So Ayana in my world is known as Butter. Um, so if anyone ever hears me call her Butter, that's her nickname. Um, we used to make jokes that she couldn't catch the ball, so we'd call her Butterfingers. And then Akama has now just come as a term of endearment. Um, but she's a great kid, smart as smart gets. Um, I never have to worry about her in the classroom. A lot of them I don't have to worry about, but... Butter gets straight A since the day I've met her. If she gets a B, she's like pissed. Um, we didn't have her last year because she tore ACL um, the summer after her sophomore year. Um, but we will be welcoming welcoming her with open arms when she comes back, hopefully this summer when we get in the gym. Um, but again, another, another great kid, someone you can trust, someone you can rely on, and someone you can know she's going to do the right thing when she's supposed to do the right thing. Definitely. Trinity Youngblood. Ah, Trinity, what a gal. Um, Trinity's been starting since she was a freshman, which on the team that we had, I think we won like 20-something games. Um, we made it to the district final, and I think we made it to a regional semifinal. So she's quiet, which has been in big games from this moment she stepped on campus. Um, my first actual mem- memory of Trinity is we were at a team camp in Jacksonville. It's like the second or third week of June, so I've known Trinity for like, I don't know, 10 days total. Trinity goes out, they do like a dance competition for the camp for like, for like a little break. Trinity's 14 year old self goes down there and like wins the whole thing almost. I think she got down to like the top three. Um, she's come a long way too. Like talk about a kid that really puts the work in. Um, she was a captain last year for us, which was a big responsibility. I mean, I definitely put more pressure on her than a lot of other people because I know she can handle it. Um, but she's just an awesome kid, always smiling, always laughing. Um, she's a, really well easily to be coached she's coachable she's great kid courtney airstead courtney courtney was also another surprise um she had never played basketball or like minimal amounts of basketball she played started her sophomore year could not dribble the ball her left hand could not make a layup could not catch the ball i mean she was a work in progress and now she gets out there she makes left hand layup she's got like a car malone finish she does like nice. the one-handed thing. Um, I don't know where she picked it up, but she's got it. Um, but another another great kid. She works really hard in practice. I mean, she doesn't play a lot, but you would never know. Um, she's just like happy to be a part of something, and she works really hard. I never really have to get on her about much. Um, but again, another surprise of a burst of our last game. Definitely, Patricia Gadsden. Trish, Trisha, what a character. Um, if she actually puts the work in, she yeah. could be a beast. Like she yep. could go and average like 10 rebounds a game, like without really even trying. Um, she's a great kid. She's funny, like funny, funny. Yeah. Um, she's another one. Like everybody knows her at school. Like all the freshmen know her, the sophomores, like everybody knows who she is. Um, just a respectful kid, funny, works hard. Um, she's come a long way just from like last summer to now. Like now she realizes how much she can actually do. Um, I mean, she used to not be able to make a 35 and now she makes them, which a 35 in our world is our conditioning drill and they all hate them, but she's now got them. Yeah. She hates them still, but she's come a long way. Of course. Of course. She's definitely hilarious. That's, that's something to hit. So <laughs> and so last, last but not least, right. Jayla Davis. Jayla. Jayla is like, I can't put her in the words. We have this very like, <laughs> unique relationship because she's also like a coach's kid and I was a coach's kid. Um, but she's a great kid. She's goofy and funny. Um, she's talented. Um, Jayla can go as far as Jayla wants to go. Um, she's come a long way in a couple of years. I mean, she's had to been, she had a lot of responsibilities put on her as a freshman. To have to start as a freshman is really difficult and have to start as a freshman and contribute is really difficult. Um, 
but she's a great kid. Her dad's awesome. Obviously, I'm so blessed to have both of them. Um, but again, they're, she's just, Jayla, you just got, if you meet, if you know her, you know, but she, she's a great kid. She's funny, smart, yeah, definitely. talented. She's got it. She's got it going on. That's for sure. Um, and she knows it, you know. Um, so let's, let's use that as a, as, a, as a, I mean, it's great that it worked out this way. Um, you know, talk a little bit about her dad, her, you know, assistant coach, um, Jason Davis. So Jason Davis has been around, I think, in Hillsborough County. I don't know how long he's been here for a minute, around a couple of schools. Um, he's from New York, so it's kind of why him and I get along a little better probably than most people because I'm from Jersey. So we kind of have that whole like northern thing going. Um, he actually was on the boy staff and we kind of took him. Um, sorry, Lavelle, if you're out there, uh, we took him in our arms and, uh, he's just awesome. He just does so many things that make my job so much easier. Like he sets the film up for every game. He does an amazing job of finding film for me. If I can't find it on a school, he breaks it down with me. He allows me to scream and yell on the sidelines and never takes it personal. Um, he just is a really good at balancing stuff out. He does a lot of things that I don't do in practice that makes me think of doing, um, he's really good with skill stuff and he's really good at like drawing something up real quick that like maybe we haven't practiced. Uh, we had a game, unfortunately we lost, but we had a game in December. We were top, down one with like three seconds to go. We called timeout. We drew up a play. I mean, like, we were wide open and unfortunately we missed, but it was like the perfect play. So he brings a lot to the table to, that we need and I just am so lucky to have him. I don't know. I could not do my job as well or as however well I do it without him. Definitely. And I want to just, because I know a little bit more too, I, I want to kind of prod this out of you. You know, all the graphics he makes. Talk about that. Oh my God. They're yeah, amazing. right. Our right. Instagram page and Twitter page, it's shout out to Jason Davis if I am good at like posting them. I am not good with technology. I joke all the time like, because he works like, he kind of works with, he works with computers every day so he's like really good with it. Meanwhile, like, I can barely submit attendance the right way at school. So, like, he bothers all that. Like, all the stuff he does on Instagram is, like, phenomenal. Like, other sports that Brooks have, like, asked how we do it. And we're just, like, Jason Davis does it. We don't we do not do it. He just does it. He sends it to us, and we're just responsible for putting it out there. Definitely. Yeah, he's, like, our our guy here at Streamlive. Like, Kavi, he's a magician. We don't know how they do it. You ask him for something, and three minutes later, it pops into your yeah. Your phone. And he's like, like, oh my God. <laughs> sorry, like how that happen? But, and he's like super critical. Like if anything I ever pick out, it cracks me up. Like if I try to get his gear or something, he's like, no, no, yes, no. I'm like, okay, all right. Let me make sure Coach Jason's pleased so we can get on with this. And he's always right. So like, I kind of want to get mad, but I'm like, dang. I thought that was cool. And he's like, no, it wasn't. I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> Bite your tongue a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dang, you got it, you're right. All right, what about Coach Maggie Headley? Ugh, I don't know where I honestly would be without Maggie Headley. I tell her all the time that she's like my mentor in life and also in basketball. Um, so luckily for me, um, she kind of took me on right away. My first year, like I mentioned, was at plant, but then I went to Brooks as I was working there. Um, she brought me along and really just kind of has taught me so many things besides just like basketball, like just dealing with certain situations and how to do certain things. And I really like don't know where I'd be without her. I'm like so thankful for her. Um, she also does such an amazing job, like with so many things, like she drives the van for us. She makes our schedule. She makes reservations. Like she does so many things that she probably I'm supposed to be doing, but she does them for me, which I'm like so grateful for. Um, but she's probably honestly the best person to make a schedule. Like she's so good at it. And it's so like, I tell her who I want to play and coach Jason tells her we want to play and she like works her magic and gets it done. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, perfect. Another little segue here. So how do you pick who you want to play? Like in, in, with this new match preps format, you know, how does that work into your schedule or scheduling? So we last year chose not to play. So being at Brooks Navarro, we're a public school. However, as far as athletic things go, we're pretty much kind of considered like a private school. So like we don't have – we don't have to, we follow the same ideas, but we don't have specific games that are scheduled for us. And we can vote whether we want to play in the district or not, district games or not. So like this past year, we chose not to play our district games. So that allows us to go out and play whatever 25 games we want to play. So what we try to do is um, with Max Prep, the thing I like the best about it is it shows you your strength of schedule, which I think is like the best thing because it allows you to, even if you lose to a team, 
and they're really good, it doesn't necessarily hurt you. And it shows you like all the hard games that you play are worth it because you're like, wow, I have a strength of schedule of 15 in a team that's whatever has a strength of schedule of two. They're like, oh, wow, like look who we play. You know, some of that is our luck because like I said, we get to, we're lucky to make our own schedule. Sure. I mean, we play the best teams we can in Tampa. Obviously, we have our Thanksgiving tournament. Uh, we play in the Sefner Christmas tournament. Um, and then we do an event in Fort Lauderdale, like it's the New Year's event. So we do our best to get out in trouble and play as many teams as we can, um, but also get the best games. Obviously, we love playing at home because, like, who doesn't love playing at home? And our little gym is definitely, like, a home court advantage because it's, like, it's just different. So we definitely, definitely. use that to our advantage. Um, but the biggest thing is getting the best competition, and that that's what I like about Max Props. It shows you that you have a strength of schedule at X, Y, and Z. So you're like, oh, wow. Like, we are playing tough teams, which is cool. And it helps with the girls to see, like, why we're doing stuff sometimes. Sure. Like, why are we playing all these hard games? Not that they think that, but, you know, they're teenagers. Sometimes they need a little bit more reassurance that we can say we have a strength of schedule that's going to help us hopefully in the long run. Because that strength of schedule allows you to hopefully when things get tough, you've already played these tougher moments. So when it's, you know, this your tournament time, you say tournament time, you've already been somewhat tested. Definitely. I think that's, that's, a, that's a great... A great thing to do. So let's go one, one last thing into wrapping up this this past season. So you went twenty and six. Um, you also, again, according to Max Preps, finished nineteenth in the state. Kind of, I guess. Let me let me kind of make this question simple, and then I'll bleed it into something else. Um, I guess maybe it's not simple. It might be really hard. Give give me your, your top moment of two thousand nineteen, two thousand twenty. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's tough. <laughs> well, uh, maybe top three. The Sheffield Christmas tournament, I thought going two and one was really cool. I think that was really good for us. Um, the biggest thing, too, is all the games we lost, the teams we lost to, every team was in the final four. American Heritage, Plant, Raider River, CDS, and then the team we lost to New Jersey was top 10 in the state, I think, when they finished everything. So that was kind of cool to me, like, wow, we lost these games, but so, Everyone we lost to, like, made it to where we're trying to go. So, kind of made it a little bit more bittersweet, if not. But um, I guess Sefner would be the Christmas tournament was fun. That was a good moment. Um, I think, I think it's being <laughs> around the kids. It's hard. Like, just being around the kids, like, it's, it's just fun. Like, it's just fun hanging out, like, being at practice with them and being on a van with them and – Doing all that stuff, like, it's fun. So it's kind of hard to pick. Like, there's certain, like, funny moments that happen. Like, Patricia Gadsden, our freshman, at one point, I yelled at her for something. And, quote, unquote, she goes, Coach Wilbur, I, I see where you're coming from. And I was like, you see where I'm, okay? All right, you're so we're good here. I just, like, I couldn't hide. I was crying laughing. Like, I just, the whole practice laugh, like, we all, no one could hit. Like, it was just so funny. She's like, yeah, I see where you're coming from. And I'm like, okay, let's move on. Um, right. <laughs> that's why, like, I would say Safner, uh, hosting our own tournament fun. The kids get to hang out at school all day, and we get all the good basketball there. So that part is fun as well. And, like I said, just being around the girls, like, that's probably the hardest part since quarantine. Like, we haven't, like, we can't be around, like, people. Like, we're used to spending every day with each other. You know, I've taught every kid on our team in class, except for, like, one. So, like, I've all had them all in class. I've had them on a basketball team. So, like, it's like we're like this one little family, and it looks like we haven't seen each other in forever. Right. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough for all of us as teachers. You know, it's, it's something that's in our blood. Um, so, I guess let's transition from that. How how do you, how do you take the next step? You know, how does that how does that come about? What, what are your thoughts? Um, like, as far as next year goes, like how to get over home. That's right. Yep. Um, I think being another year older. Uh, I think having four seniors is going to hopefully carry us through a lot of difficult times in four seniors who've played a lot of basketball. Um, you know, our sophomore will be another year older. Our freshman will be another year older. I think just having also another year, me as head coach under our, like, it's just more, it's like, okay, this is another year. We're getting more comfortable. Um, getting on the humps really is important. It's just sometimes you start to make more shots. You know, sure. sometimes it really is that simple in basketball games. Like, sometimes the other team just hits more shots. Um, you know, the two games we lost, 
at the end of the year, I thought we were in both of them. Like at one point, we were down one or two with two minutes to go. Like we were in the game. You know, the ball bounces this way, the ball bounces that way. Um, I think as far as getting better for next year, um, I think obviously it's hard now, especially like obviously, you know, like we're normally working out now, we're doing things, we're lifting, we're conditioning, we're having open gym and things we're, we're doing. And this summer, we don't really know what's going to happen. So it's kind of like this weird life of like, what do we do and how do we plan? Um, and hopes for, I mean, I actually think this was good for some of people because I think a lot of kids realize like, oh, wow, like, I really do love basketball. I think there's so much pressure on these kids now, like different than when I played. Like everywhere they go is like an exposure tournament. And they have to play for colleges and they have to go this and they have to go D1 or D2. They have to get a scholarship that they forget like, why they have been playing basketball. Sure. You know, I think that this is kind of good for that because some kids are like, wow, I really do love basketball. I do miss basketball. Just being in the gym with my friends. Um, so I think getting stronger, the girls, need to, we need to get the girls stronger this year. I think at some points we were kind of bullied around because, again, we are not the tallest team. We are mighty mites. We are small but strong. I mean, we get the job done. There's plenty of teams that have been bigger and stronger than us and Trinity, Bree, Amari, and Jayla, and Maya all battle down there. And Julian trying to get three I'm like, how do we even get that? Sure. So I think getting stronger. And then I think um, just being more comfortable. I mean, again, like another year older is a big thing. Seniors are a, a mm-hmm. blessing to have. Mm-hmm. Having four seniors is, I mean, we have five, but four that really, four that might start. So having that many seniors is it's comfortable as a coach because I'm like, I can trust that I know they're going to do the right thing. So, you know, it's, again, it's a team that we got beat by a very good team this year. They had four seniors that started. You know, and your seniors, they they fake stuff. You know, I mean, I'm sure you remember being a senior. You're just comfortable. They fix things that I can't fix. You know, like, I, as much as I love basketball, but love coaching, I can't shoot for them. I can't pass for them. I can't dribble for them. I can't defend for them. Definitely. I can put them on the right spot, but at the end of the day, they have, they have to do it. Sure. And that's the best part. So... We are lucky to have as many people are getting back, but you know, if that comes expectations of what we want. So, you know, as far as hopefully everyone, we all, I believe is we will go as far as we allow each other to go. That's it. We that's will it. be our biggest enemy. Cause just, that's just how I feel. Sure. No, I think that's, that's awesome. And I think this is, again, it's kind of perfect. It lines up. Um, very talented team. And again, I, I, I got to coach at the University of Iowa and I got to see the, the women's basketball there. And again, the camaraderie, the culture, the way they carry mm-hmm. themselves, it, it rivals it. I and mean, I'm not joking. Um, you know, of course, Iowa has some six, six uh, trees, you know, yeah. a little different, you know, but getting drafted. <laughs> right, right. You know, but, but I'm not joking when I say that it's, it's very similar. And, and honestly, there's just a, a, such a talented group. Now, the big question is for me, how do you keep them focused? Like, what kind of things do you, do you put into place to keep them focused? Because they know they can turn it on when they, when they need it. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not allowed to get away with a lot, which is sure, <laughs> obviously you know. Um, yeah. They're not in school. They're not allowed to get away with a lot. In practice, they're not allowed to get away with a lot. They're just they, – and they know that's the expectation. You know, is it hard? Yes, because they're teenagers. It, that comes with its own battles. But um, – and then when you start winning, it makes things, they're like, oh, this is working. Um, so obviously winning and having success is great. Um, I think we try to do a nice job on the staff of like mixing stuff up in practice, like find ways to make things fun. Like we've played dodgeball, we've played tag, we've done like team building activities. And I thought like the team needed something different than just warming up with a basketball today. Um, I think the biggest thing is like reminding them that it is fun. Um, like I still love going to practice every day. Like other days, I'm like, wow, I'm tired. I don't, I don't know if I can do this. But then I see them. I'm like, oh, I can. It's fine. Two hours. We got this. It's gonna be fun. Um, I think that's the biggest thing is making it fun, but also making it rewarding. Like I might scream and yell and you know be tough on them, but when they do something right, I am like the biggest cheerleader. You know, but they have know that if they're doing something wrong, there's you know. It doesn't work, you know. If we don't handle the ball, if we don't play defense, if we don't run a set right, like it doesn't always work. So I think that's the biggest thing, and they're all super responsible. Honestly, um, they're really good. It got to a point where they police each other, which is the best part. Um, like they know 
that like if someone's lagging in practice, they can say something to each other and they're comfortable saying stuff to each other because they created that. You know, they have fun and they're friends, which also helps. Um, so that's the biggest thing. I think it's just like keeping it fun and making them realize like this is a sport. It is fun. Like it's not, we're trying to do things here, but we're also trying to have a good time and win a few games while we're at it. Of course, of course. Yeah, that, that's definitely something that you got to do. And, and you you were a teenage girl at once, and you you definitely understand. Right, like, I know I, I know that, <laughs> like, but at one point I was them. And, like, I know sometimes they don't want to listen to me, just like I didn't want to listen to my high school coach at times. But sometimes you just, just got to suck it up. You just yeah. trust that we – I sometimes do know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'm wrong. They will tell you I never say I'm wrong, but that is not true. I tell them I'm wrong all the time. Um, but – you know. So, okay. Okay, I got a little I got a little opportunity here. So, since we say you are wrong, it's not like that. But give me like maybe your biggest how can you coach what we get better at coaching next year? What what can be like your your biggest check on yourself? How can you develop and you know this, this I would like since we have such a like a seed in your like I mentioned like be able to give them some freedom on like what they want to run and what they want to do knowing like it's that would be like my biggest thing like trusting our seniors and knowing okay like i mean you're in the game like i'm not playing sure. so, like i can see stuff but they can see and they've played enough basketball these these girls that they know at this point like okay let's go to a zone let's run a different set let's do this let's do that like i would like to get to a point where like i call something and Trinity's like no let's try this and i'm like okay and we run it and she and whether it's good or bad like at least she had the idea to be like, okay, let's do that. I think this is gonna work. Definitely. And so, so, so that would be the biggest thing. Yeah. So you're, you're gonna try to take a little little control out of your hands and hand it to them. Right. And I again, like they do have so much talent. And you know, again, we if we have things that they can run to put them in the best spots. And if Mari says let's run this, and then we run it and it works, and I'm like, okay, let's try this, and it works. And Bree says, okay, let's run. This. Let's try. We have. We're all trying to win here. Like, let's awesome. do what's best for all of us. Awesome. You know, and if Amari comes over to the huddle and she's like, I want to guard 15. And Dale's like, I want to guard 12. And whatever it may be, like, they taking ownership and be like, I'm going to shut this girl down. I want to do this. Let's get it done. Definitely. All right. So let me transition. Let me let me get you going about, about strength conditioning at Brooks. So what, what kind of things have you guys, what did you see, I guess? So you were, you know, an assistant for three years and then obviously took over the helm this year. How do you think the, the strength program there kind of helped you this past year? I mean, obviously, like, getting in the weight room as much as you can. I know girls don't always want to get in the weight room, but our team, actually, our girls do. Um, they actually like it. I think they also like hearing a different voice. Um, I mean, it's like anything. You hear the same voice over and over and over, and it's like a nice change of pace. Um, and, like, luckily, we were blessed with Andrew Burke to roll up into Brooks the Bottle. <laughs> I don't even know where he came from. All I know is guy was coming with a ponytail and he was trying to work here. I was like, all right, let's see what this guy's got. Um, and it's been great. I mean, the girls obviously love it. Um, that's like the crappy part about all this too. Is like, we just can't do it right now. Um, but it's just, it's great. Like, I mean, it's obviously, like I said, it's nice that I don't always have to worry about that. And like, that was one of the things that honestly Maggie told me to like give people to let people do what they're good at. Like you're great at this. I could do it, but I'm, you know, I can, I'm better at running a practice. So letting people who are good at things and great at things, take that responsibility and make the team better. Like anything we can do to make these girls better in life, in school and basketball, whatever they're going to do, like that's what I'm trying to do. At some point they're all, they're going to leave and they're going to graduate. And I hope them all to go do fabulous things, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to make them better people through all this, not just a better basketball player. There's far bigger things than an orange ball in the world. Especially today, you know, it doesn't... Right, especially today, so. Yeah. And now at least not have ball for a few months, you're probably realizing, oh, there's all, this, all these things out here. You know, I think just just because, you know, we, we do work together and, and because I know the kids that, that, that go to Brooks, I think this is also going to be like a shot in the arm to appreciate the small things like going yeah. to wonderful school and, and being able mm -hmm. to roll a basketball and, and shoot at a gym, you know, and, uh, right. you know, that's, that's things that they will, they will appreciate because they're, they're that type of kid, you know? Right. Um, now, what is, what is maybe one or two things that you told them they, they should be doing right now to enhance their, their skill, their game? Um, so I 
try most of them I was able to talk to most of them even before like this all even happened like I try to get to all of them and like figure out like what three things you want to work on this off season like x y and z like what do you want to get better at um so like one of some of them would say my ball handling some of them would say my shot off the dribble some of them would say my quickness so obviously taking those things and hopefully doing them um you know it's hard because some of these our kids have better like different not better but different resources like a couple kids have a hoop and a couple kids you know have basketball more basketball than someone else so it's kind of tricky um but the ones i can i mean i can feel confident enough that they're all getting something done it may not be every day it may not be seven days a week but they're all doing something to get better because they all want to be better um uh coach jason actually with his aau team does like a zoom call and he does like a workout with them and so like i know there's a couple kids on our team that play for him um and i know a couple of the other aau teams are doing stuff so like that's also been super helpful he's honestly like after season you kind of try it's like this weird thing with high school that's where like you're all like you like trade them all like they aau coach takes them and then like you take them for a month sure. and then they go back to the aau coach and then they come back to us so it's like it's been working well because like I mean we're kind of all all working towards the same goal, but it's like nice to work together, like to have them have different resources. Like they come to me, your coach Jason or Coach Maggie, and then also go to like their respective AU programs that have been super helpful throughout this too as well. Definitely. Do, do you see? Um, speaking of just you know something that I'm, I'm inquisitive about. Has there been any news in terms of summer camps at this point? It's still kind of up in the air. So I know all, like, the colleges have canceled their camps, um, which is not, like, the end of the world because um, it's, I mean, it's, it's not the end of the world. It could be, it'd sure. be better if they were doing them. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with AAU. Um, I think, like, what I honestly, I was listening to um, my fam, Gene Ariana and Sue Bird, the other day on a Instagram Live. And Sue Bird said that she doesn't think things will go back to normal until sports go back to normal. Like, people sure. won't feel normal because, like, I don't think, I mean, I don't know how serious people were taking it or not taking it, but, like, when the NBA shut down, I feel like everything was, like, oh, crap. Like, it was, like, whoa. So, I think, um, obviously, like, I would love to be able to get into the gym this summer, like, in June. Like, that'd be, like, a dream. Yeah. And that's when we normally do stuff. Um, but... Again, I'll take whatever we can get. I'm not going to be greedy. Obviously, I'll take whatever proper precautions that I have to go out there with gloves and a mask and do whatever I have to do. Like, I will gladly do what I have to do. Um, the biggest thing, too, is obviously, like, AU is such a big thing for these guys this summer, especially for our seniors. So, like, I would really love for them to get an opportunity to get out there and get some type of, you know, exposure to other schools that may not have seen them yet. Um, and there's only so much you can do over a computer, unfortunately. Right. Before, you know what I mean? Like they want to see him live. Of course. So, but yeah, and you do have a lot. You know, we do have a lot of two B seniors. You know, so that is a big time for kind right. of, you know the area. So yeah, that's that's tough. Well, Coach Wilbur, anything last that you want to say? We're gonna kind of wrap this up. And what, what would you like to add? Maybe anything um, to the. Um, I miss all of you. If any of you see this, you probably won't. But if you do, <laughs> if you skip through it. If you skip through it to the end. No, I miss you. Uh, I can't wait to get in the gym. Um, I hope you're all working on your games and not just watching Netflix. Um, if you guys are caught to a game next year, hopefully it will be pretty exciting. Hopefully one of us your games. Um, that's all I got. I mean, thanks to Coach Burdick for, you know, Andrew Burdick. I guess you're Andrew Burdick in this world for bringing me out here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so. Awesome. Yeah, we, we appreciate your time. Um, thanks for coming. No hope it was fun. We'll definitely have to get you on here again. And I think... Next year, I'm, I'm feeling big things. It's going to be a championship next year. So you heard it here. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, hey. well, everyone needs to knock on wood to hear this. Everyone hey, let, let, let's raise the bar, right? Let's raise the bar and let's let's let's, let's take it home and, and sign right. it home. All right. So uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Our, our sixth episode. It was awesome talking to Ellie Wilbur. Um, again, she's going to have a whole another year under her belt next year. And, Again, well, let's knock on wood and, and, and let's hope October comes and we can get those basketballs out. Um, we'd like to, again, thank our sponsor. Well, first of all, let's, let's thank, thank you guys for showing up. And, um, you know, please like and share on Twitter, on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, subscribe. Um, it definitely helps us. And, again, we do this all for free. We do this for the kids. It's, it's another way to get exposure. Um, and it's another way to, you know, really, really help out families that are maybe, you know, at, at a distance. So, you know, we, we, we love what we do and we want to cover as much as we can. And 
your guys' support definitely helps us with that. Um, and we'd also like to thank the OG, Lucas AC Service. Um, call Lewis at 813-369-9389. He'll give you a free estimate. Again, he's got the best prices and the best service, Lucas AC Service. All right. AB Sports Performance, I got a new website. You can check me out, absportsperformance.net. Um, I'm putting on free workouts. I'm doing a nutrition talk on Wednesdays. There's a lot of things that are popping up. So definitely, you know, send me a DM or, or uh, you can reach me on my, my website, you know, and, and any way that I can help. Again, I'm, I'm about helping the kids too. So um, our, our newer sponsors, we have Lou Larandi at Larandi Gloves. Um, again, he has, he has custom gloves. Um, made to your order, and it's again, it's it's for for the low. So give them give them some love if you if you uh, need a glove, and it's that's pretty good. 404 401 2794. And then our last sponsor here, Game Time Prospects. Again, if you want to get recruited, we just kind of talked about AAU basketball. It's kind of the same thing with baseball, right? Like you got to play during the summer, you got to be seen at these camps. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're in a weird time, but when it gets back to it, if you want to play at the next level, call David Sansom. 813-486-9716. All right, guys. Again, thank you for joining us. Again, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We appreciate it. Thank you.